Hi everybody. In this video, we're going to look at the definition of inflection point. Here's a nice sinusoidal curve where we can see the concavity changing back and forth between being concave down and concave up. And these nice points of transition where uh, the concavity changes, we call points of inflection. You hear the term bandied about in um, popular culture quite a bit, certainly in business. Suppose you have some new fancy gadget and you're going to sell these things and you plot the total number of units sold as a function of time, you might get a graph that looks like this. And so you might notice this moment right here at time C, we could call that an inflection point. And the relevance of this for business is, yes, after time C, you continue to increase the number of units of your product that you've sold. However, the rate of change is decreasing. So you continue to sell more units, but you can see that the popularity is starting to wane. And so this is a popular use of the term inflection point in business or economics or other social sciences. Just be aware that uh, other times people use the term quite loosely as a synonym for important moment. So they probably don't have an actual graph in mind or any kind of mathematical model. They might just be saying, oh, this is an important moment. But in mathematics, it should be the case that when we have an idea that we're talking about, it should be well-defined. And surprisingly, inflection point is one of these ideas that is not well defined. You see different definitions as you move from textbook to textbook, and some of those definitions are even ambiguous. So in this video, what I'd like to do is to offer a possible route to define inflection point and then something looser than inflection point that we might call a concavity transition. So here's a provisional definition of inflection point, you could say that a point A comma F of A is an inflection point of the graph of F if the concavity of F changes across the argument X equals A. So your classic picture looks something like this. And now here's the question, is this a satisfying definition of inflection point? So let's take a test drive. We'll look at the reciprocal function. This is clearly concave down from negative infinity to zero, and then concave up from zero to infinity. Is there an inflection at the origin, x equals zero? Well, the concavity changes across x equals zero. That's certainly a good sign if you're rooting for this to be an inflection. However, implicitly at least, in our definition, we've demanded that you be able to evaluate the function at the argument in question, and f of zero is not defined. So according to this definition, we've failed, and this is not an inflection point at zero. Notice, however, that you could redefine f to be the reciprocal function as long as the argument is not zero, but then we're going to redefine the function to be zero at zero, now our objection vanishes. The function value is perfectly well defined and we still have our transition in concavity. So it would appear that using this simple definition, this example has to pass as an example of an inflection point. And this might make you understandably grumpy because it doesn't seem to capture the spirit of what we have in mind with an inflection point. So, Ultimately, a mathematical definition is, in some sense, a matter of taste. You want to put in the hypotheses, the parts of your definition, that make it useful and agreeable, in some sense, with the theorems you want to prove from it. And of course, it has to be unambiguous. You have to be able to point at certain objects and say, do they satisfy the definition or not? The mere fact that concavity changes across an argument does not mean there's an inflection point. Certainly we should require that the function be defined at an inflection point, but what other requirements should we add to create a satisfying definition? 
Here's the graph of a function, and we'll notice that the concavity changes across each of these four arguments. It's reasonable to say that, that the function f has four concavity transitions, and now we ask which of these do we want to be inflection points? We could demand that f be continuous at the argument. That seems quite reasonable. And on the basis of this demand, you would rule out argument A as a candidate for an inflection point. Argument B passes, but we'll notice that there's this sort of shark fin pointy place. And once again, this might make you wonder, is this really what we want? Does this capture the spirit of inflection? If we're allowed to just make our definition, we could rule this out. Let's go with the demand that f be differentiable at the argument. So of course, a is still out of the picture, and now we can rule out b. c looks good, but now d is a problem. So what's going on at d is we have a vertical tangent line. The function is not differentiable at this argument. However, there's this nice tangent line that happens to be vertical. And so this function also seems to capture the spirit of what we were thinking about a moment ago with an inflection. So we might not be satisfied with this definition either. So we could demand that either f be differentiable at the argument or f has a vertical tangent line there. So now we get the first two would fail to be the locations of inflection points, but the last two cases we'd be okay. And this might make you happy, makes me happy. I'm pretty satisfied with this condition. So I propose that we make the following definitions. First, let's define something called a concavity transition, a very loose definition, a weak definition. We will say that f has a concavity transition at c if there are open intervals on either side of c, having c as an endpoint, that have different concavity whether or not f is defined at c. And then an inflection point will say that f has an inflection point at c if there is a concavity transition at c and either f is differentiable at c or f has a vertical tangent line at c. One of the things to notice is that using this definition, every inflection point occurs at a concavity transition, but not every concavity transition is the location of an inflection point. And we'll go back to our reciprocal function. So this has a concavity transition at the origin, but no inflection point at the origin. And finally, we're going to go to this expanded prototype here where we have five arguments now and you'll notice that at the first argument where the concavity changes from up to down the function isn't even defined at the second argument the function is defined but it's not continuous at the third argument the function is continuous but not differentiable at the fourth argument the function is differentiable and then at the fifth argument the function is not differentiable but it has a vertical tangent line so in all cases we have a concavity transition because we don't really care what happens at the argument. We just care about whether the concavity changes as you move across the argument. But with our much stricter definition of inflection point, we're gonna rule out the first, second, and third cases and allow only the last two. So a final word of warning. Definitions of inflection point vary. Seek clarification if in doubt. So I've got three textbooks in my office here that I'm looking at three wildly different definitions because one textbook demands that the function have a second derivative at a point of inflection. That would not allow a vertical tangent. I have another book that doesn't even require that the second derivative exist at the argument and therefore discontinuities could pop into the picture. And then I'm looking at a third definition that demands continuity but not differentiability. So this allows a shark fin type of inflection point. So it's definitely not universal what is meant by inflection point. And when you're in any particular context, if you're reading a book, looking something up online, having a discussion with others, you need to seek clarification if in doubt. You need to find out what the operational definition is. And one last piece of advice. Please make sure that when you're having a nice spirited discussion with others about math generally, or inflection points in particular, that you're all on the same page with your definitions. It is a big waste of time to be fighting about something when it turns out you have in mind different definitions 
for your notion. You have to get the definition squared away before you can have a useful and productive debate about the mathematics. I hope this is helpful. Good luck and uh, see you in a future video.